Today I will be talking about graph theory, a subset in discrete mathematics, and its application within the field of computer science. This will start out with an introduction of graph theory and the motivation behind using it, especially within computer science. I will discuss some definitions and introductory concepts that are useful and will be implemented later in this presentation. I will then get into the shortest path problem and the algorithms that will solve it. This involves the discussion of what a greedy algorithm is and a Dijkstra's algorithm. I will later prove Dijkstra's algorithm, and then I will discuss weighted graphs and how they are used in computer science, and I will conclude by wrapping up what I discussed today. To start out, Graph theory is a study in discrete mathematics that evaluates items, which we will find out are called nodes, that are oftentimes connected by things we will be calling edges. Graph theory is useful in that it represents data in a way that can aid displaying complex arrangements of information and allow us to process data in a meaningful way. In this picture, we have color-coded pubs throughout the United Kingdom, and the lines connect those pubs so you can get between them in the shortest path possible. Graph theory can be applied heavily in computer science because it provides a way to better manage connected data. A good example of graph theory in computer science is digitized maps and directions. So to start out, what is a graph? In this diagram, the points labeled 1, 2, etc. are called nodes or vertices, where the number given is the label for the specific node. The lines connecting these nodes are called edges, and this diagram of nodes and edges is a graph, which we typically call G. The degree of a node is the number of edges with that node as an endpoint. So looking in this graph, the node 5 has a degree of 3 because it is connected to three other nodes. Now moving into more specific graphs, a graph is considered directed if the edges between nodes are one way. So in this graph on the left, we can only go from A to B, not from B to A, meaning that this graph is directed. A graph is weighted if the edges have a cost associated with them. So in this graph on the right, going from A to D has a cost of 40. This can be either distance or a weight or some sort of constraint placed on moving between the nodes. And it's important to note that a weighted graph does not have to be directed. Now traversing a graph, a walk is a sequence of edges, one after the other. A path is a walk in which no edge, which in which no node appears more than once. So an example path would be A to B and then B to C. And a cycle is a path that begins and ends at the same node. So this could be B to C, C to E, E to D, and D to B. Now, the shortest path problem is an, a good example of working with graphs and working with traversing graphs. The shortest path problem says, given a directed graph G with nodes N and edges E, where the edge lengths L sub E are greater than or equal to zero, and a start node S in our set of nodes, and a destination node t in our set of nodes find the shortest directed path from s to t. We can solve this with what is called a greedy algorithm. An algorithm is a set of well-defined instructions that can solve a class of problems. And a greedy algorithm is any algorithm which makes the locally optimum choice at each step towards the solution locally optimum meaning either making the shortest choice or the least costly choice, whichever choice that is best fitting the problem. 
In the context of graph theory, this could be choosing the edge with the smallest weight or choosing the edge with the biggest weight. For the shortest path problem, we will be choosing the edge with the smallest weight or shortest length. Dijkstra's algorithm is a popular greedy algorithm that is used to solve the shortest path problem. It says, given a graph and a start node S in our set of nodes and an end node T in our set of nodes, maintain a set of explored nodes such that for each node in this set of explored nodes, we have determined their lengths, which we will call D of U, and add a node V to our set of explored nodes that is the shortest distance from our starting node. This is a little wordy, but it's best represented in an algorithmic form. So we let our set S be our set of explored nodes, and for each U in S, we store its distance. Then initially, S is our starting node, and the distance for S is zero because the distance from a node to itself is zero. And while our set of explored nodes S does not equal the set of all nodes, we will select a new node that is not yet in S and has at least one edge connecting it to S. And we will maintain the smallest, we will maintain the distance and record the smallest distance until we have gone through every node in our graph. This can be best understood through an example. So we will use this graph here and start at C. So we start at our start node C, the distance from C to itself is zero. And since we have yet to explore every other node in the graph, we will set their labels as infinity until we change them as we look at them. So first we will look at C and all of the nodes that it is connected to and record the distance between these nodes. So C to B is seven, which is smaller than infinity. So we will change the, the label on B and change that to seven. C to A has a, a weight of one. So we change the label on A to one and C to D has a weight of two, so we change the label on D to two. Now that we've looked at every node that is connected to C, we are done with C, and we want to move on to the next node that has not been completed and has the shortest distance from C, meaning that we'll move to A. Looking now at A, we've gone from A to C, and C is complete and checked off. So the only option we have is to look at A to B. Now B currently has a label of seven, but we wanna check it anyway. A to B has a weight of three and A already has a weight of one. So moving from A to B gives B a new weight of four. Four is less than seven. So we change the label on B because four is smaller. And with this changed, we are now done with A and we move on to D because two as a label is the next smallest in our set. Again, D is connected to C, which has already been explored. Now we check D to B. We have the weight at D is two and the weight from D to B is five, meaning that if we were go, going to go from C to D and D to B, that would give us a weight of seven. Seven is bigger than four, so we will leave the label on B unchanged. Now looking at D to E, E has yet to be explored, so we will assign it a label of seven plus two equal to nine. And then since four is less than nine, we move on to B. B is connected to every node in the graph, but A, C, and D are complete meaning that we only have to consider B to E. Since B has a label of four and the weight of the edge from B to E is one, we know that B to E is, has a weight of five total. And we can change the label on E to five because five is smaller than nine. Finally, we have to look at E. 
E is connected to B and D, but those are both completed, meaning that we assign the label that E has, which is five, and now we're done. This tells us that starting at C, we know the shortest path to any node in the graph. And we know that, for instance, getting from C to E, it would be shorter to go C to A, A to B, and B to E than any other combination of nodes. Now that we've gone through this example, we will prove Dijkstra's algorithm by induction. To start out, for each node U in our set S, we will let DU denote the length of the shortest S to U path, where S is the starting node. Our base case is that if there is one node in S, then the shortest path is trivial because the distance from a node to itself, as we mentioned earlier, is zero. Now our inductive step. We will assume that Dijkstra's algorithm is true for k elements in our set of explored nodes, S, where k is greater than or equal to one. We will then choose V to be the next node added to S and we will let uv be the chosen edge. The shortest s to u path plus uv is our s to v path, where its length is the minimum of the path from s to u plus the length of the edge from u to v. We then will consider any s to v path, which we will call p, and we will see that it is no shorter than this minimum equation that we labeled star. We want to let x to y be the first edge in P that is expanded from S, and we will let P prime be the subpath to x. At this point, we know that P is already too long because our induction hypothesis found a shortest path, and this equation described below demonstrates that the length to P or distance to P is either greater than or equal to the path that we found in our equation star, and thus our induction proof is done. This is a little tricky, so we'll revisit this graph that we were working with earlier. And what it, the proof is saying is that, say, we have established C and A and B and we know that C to A is one and A to B is three, giving us C to B as four. If we consider instead looking from C to D and D to B, seven is greater than four and our algorithm already found the shortest path to B. Now, how does this relate to computer science? In computer science, there is something called the traveling salesman problem which is similar to the shortest path problem that we've been discussing. The traveling salesman problem says, given a graph G and a start node S in our set of nodes, find the shortest path starting and ending at S that visits every node in G. It's called the traveling salesman problem because it is saying, given a salesman starting in the city that he lives in, visit every city to sell the product and then return home in the quickest amount of time or in the shortest distance. So the example that we saw earlier, we determined the shortest path to nearly every pub in the United Kingdom. You can see each pub is listed and the shortest path connects every pub where you can start at one and then work your way throughout the United Kingdom until you return back. The traveling salesman is regarded as a highly topical problem because it relates to finding optimal directions. Moving through a graph is useful in that it can provide the ideal situations for the ideal path for situations, sorry, for things like deliveries, or road trips. Now, algorithms, like we mentioned before, can be described based on their runtime. If an algorithm runs in polynomial time, then that algorithm finds a solution in a duration of time related to some polynomial function. 
as the algorithm runs on more input, so in our case, more nodes or edges in a graph, then the time it takes to run scales up via the polynomial it's described by. So if an algorithm runs in n squared time, if you have three nodes, that would equate to nine, but if you have 10 nodes, that would equate to 100, meaning that it scales up quite significantly in cases. So an algorithm is labeled as P if it can be solved in polynomial time, and an algorithm is labeled NP if its solution can be verified in polynomial time. This means that it might not be able to be solved in polynomial time, but if it's an algorithm is given a solution to a problem and that solution can be double checked and confirmed as correct, then that would be NP. And an algorithm is NP hard if it cannot be solved in polynomial time. The traveling salesman problem is an NP hard problem, meaning that there is no easy way to find the guaranteed shortest path for the traveling salesman problem. Since the solution cannot be found in polynomial time, it is important to understand graph theory to get an almost correct solution. Graph theory provides a foundation and theorems that can be used to provide us heuristics to solve the problem. A heuristic is a problem solving approach that finds the solution. It just isn't guaranteed to be the optimal solution. Algorithms like Dijkstra's algorithm and modifying or adjusting them can help us parse through graphs and better address exceptionally difficult problems while still being feasible to solve them. This means that some problems, such as the traveling salesman problem, optimal solutions cannot be immediately found. If we checked every possible solution, it could take lifetimes to get close to solving a problem and heuristics provide a way to get a solution that might be 95% to the way of being completely optimal. So to sum up, today we talked about graph theory, which is a branch of discrete mathematics. And we discussed the shortest path problem because it exposes us to the world of graph theory within the concept context of computing. Some problems can be represented via graphs very well, and it's important to understand graph theory and how to use it and work through it optimally so we can represent it in a computer and get optimal solutions to these problems. And then here are my references. Thank you.